Hi guys! Um, so I've never really done a full-on tutorial in Blender before about how to make your own model um, using other creators assets so I decided that I'm going to do that for the newer people in the community so this um, tutorial is mainly for people who have never really used Blender, don't really know where to start on making their own models um, so yeah I'm just gonna put a disclaimer out there I am not an expert in any way. Um, a lot of stuff I know how to do is self-taught. I watched a lot of videos. Um, I had some friends know um, other 3D programs like Maya and I just generally ask a lot of questions to other creators in the community. Um, so just disclaimer, I'm not an expert but um, I'm just going to pass on uh, the knowledge that I have just so... Um, you guys get a bit of a head start on how to make your models. Um, so first of all, I'm going to be using 2.93 in Blender. Um, I know there's 3.0 out now, but um, I'm going to be using a previous version just because the Cats plugin isn't fully compatible with the newer version of Blender yet. Um, the newest Cats plugin is fully compatible with 2.93 so that's why I've gone for an older version of Blender um so yeah we're in Blender so the first thing you want to do um is get the cats plugin so I remove mine just so I can show you guys how to get it into your Blender um so first of all you want to go to Google uh type in cats Blender plugin and then you want to go to the first one which should say github you just click on there Okay, and then you want to scroll down to releases. It says latest, so you just want to click there. As you can see, it's fully compatible with Blender 2.93. So what we're going to do is we're going to download this one. Here we go, and you can see it's downloaded. So it's now in my downloads folder just here. So go back to Blender. Uh, you want to go to edit, preferences, and then you want to click on add-ons here. And then you want to go to install. Then you want to find your cats. Here it is. Install. And as you can see, it'll pop up like this. What you want to do is just tick it. And then you will see the cats menu here pop up for you. So if you open it up, you'll see all these lovely options for you. So um, this add-on just makes uh, model making a little bit easier for you. Um, it's just very helpful in certain ways and stuff. And some people use it more than others. And some people just use it for like certain things. Um, I mostly use it for merging amateurs. Uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. So here we are in Blender. Um, our first thing we can do is just delete all the default stuff that come with Blender. Because we don't really need any of it. Um... So yeah, um, first thing we're going to need, so we're making a model, so first thing that we do need is a body, because every model needs a body. So I'm going to be using Panda Bear's female base. Um, I actually bought this when I first started model make, like first starting dabbling in model making. Um, I have had no issues with this one. I'm very familiar with how it works. Um, so I'm going to be using this one. And I actually I did message Panda um, to see if I would be able to use it on a free avatar. Just um, so I can make this tutorial and produce the avatar for free for people. Um, so I do have permission to use this on a free avatar. Um, so yeah, this is the one I'm going to be importing. So I'm going to import it now. Um, I'm going to be using the flat foot version of his base. Here we go. Um, just so this um, video stays safe for work, I'm also going to um, add Antara's Uwu boxes. So it just covers anything that <laughs> might be deemed not safe for work. Um, so I can just uh, not worry about um, things being on show. Uh, I'm going to flick it over in viewport shading mode just because I prefer that personally. You can work in solid mode with a matte cap and a texture if you would prefer that. But I just, I like the look of viewport um, shade in mode so I'm just gonna use that um, so now we have the base uh, I'm gonna put a texture on it um, so I'm just gonna click on the materials tab and go down to MMD texture I'm gonna click add and then I'm gonna look for the texture I want now the texture I want to use are from 
uni uh she made this awesome pack and it is free of textures for pandas base it has various skin tones and also very nice little add-ons and stuff so um some of them have freckles as you can see some of them have this nice little cracked um like texture um and then some of them have tan lines as you can see um so yeah i would recommend this if you purchase um panda bear's female base definitely go and grab the free pack of textures from the uni uh, i will be linking all of these um assets in the description or somewhere um so that you guys can also go grab them or purchase them or whatever you want to do um so let's just go back in blender so i can add the texture so i'm just gonna go for um, a beauty mark one um that i always tend to use especially on my um previews and stuff um so here we go we have our we have our base in blender um yeah if you're not too familiar with like the controls of blender i just recommend doing maybe like 30 minutes or something just to get used to the controls in blender just so you know like what button does what like how to move um it shouldn't take too long and you get used to it after a little while like i can navigate blender quite well now um so, you know, just go over those a little bit and it will help you massively. Uh, anyway, now we have our base. Um, I am going to import a head. Um, so I made an edit of a free head. So I already edited it off screen um, from, uh, I see if I saved it. Uh, let's see, here it is. Um, this one. So this is the, um, free one that I downloaded and I did a massive edit for it. Um, it's very, very pretty. It was initially a lolly head, but I, I don't think my edit looks massively like a lolly head. Um, so I'm just going to find that and import it. So it should be in my downloads and then I should have it here. This is the edit that I made. Um, so it already fits um, onto my model because I placed it. Um, but your head might... Um, it may spawn quite high up or something like this. All you have to do is just click on the bones of the head, go to move, and then just move it into the correct place suitable for you. Um, always zoom in and just make sure the neck's fully connected because uh, sometimes you can end up with a, a little gap there, which is not exactly what we're looking for in our models. So just make sure all the gaps are um, covered and stuff. Um, so yeah, same as the, the body, we want to put a texture on this. So I have a material here, scroll down, go to MMD texture, click on add, and then I'm just going to add a texture that I did edit together based on the textures that um, they gave us as well. So here we go, just going to add a texture. And then I'm also going to turn down the reflect. So as you can see, it looks quite shiny. Uh, with the light in so if you turn down the reflect it just turns it nice and matte so there's no shine anymore um i find it very very helpful um to kind of see what it would look like more without like the reflective blender and stuff so here you go so now you have your sort of base in blender and your head there uh what i'm gonna do is since i'm happy with the head and the body um completely i'm going to connect those two so that my whole base of my avatar is or is connected so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to my cats so you want to click on cats and i'm gonna go to custom model creation and merge armatures now what you want to do with this is you want to make sure your base armature is here and your head armature is here because you're gonna add the head to the body um, that's the way I remember it um, if you're unsure of which which armature is which if you click on the body you'll see it highlights the body in the hierarchy up here the one above it is your body armature so this is the name that it will be in this list okay and similar to the head so if you click on the head and then you, you go up one, it's 001. So now you know that this is the body armature, this is the head armature. So I'm going to untick these. 
and then I'm going to make sure this is my body, which it is. I'm going to make sure this is the head, which it is. And then I'm going to click Merge Armatures. Just give your blender a second. There we go. And now what's, what's happened here is it's connected the armatures on both my head and my body. So now if I show the armature, it's both armatures as one. Which means that if you then go into pose mode, the whole of your model should move. So if I go to neck, my head should move with my body, which it does, as you can see. Um, so just stop pose mode to make it go back to how it is. And there you go. This is a pretty successful avatar base. Everything is connected just as it is. But obviously we can't... Um, we can't just upload this model, you know, there's no clothes, she hasn't got hair, so um, we're gonna, we're gonna add those. So I'm gonna add the hair first. Um, so for the, the hair, I actually picked onions, uh, lazy pigtails, they are free. Uh, I'll see if I got them, yeah, I got them here. Um, so just these ones, I picked them, uh, they're very cute, um, they're free. Um, and yeah, I'll link them in the description too. So I'm going to be using these on her. They look like they'll fit quite nicely already, uh, but we are going to quickly edit. Now, if you go into, um, if you're on your bones and you click on move, but you don't see the arrows, if you notice that they're down here, it's a little bit hard to like position something when you're so far away. Uh, what I normally do is I actually go to object, set origin, and then set origin to geometry and then you see your arrows are much higher now so you can actually move this a bit better because you're closer so i would go to about there and then maybe a bit more forward and then i want to bring it down say to about there nice um as you can see uh these are a little bit big um to fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it down. So if you press S and you move your mouse, it scales it for you. So I'm just going to do S and scale it down ever so slightly. And then I'm going to just move it forward a little bit, maybe up a little bit too. I'll look from the front. Yeah, we're going to keep moving it forward a tiny bit. All right, I'm happy with the placement of this, technically, because um, I think it looks quite good, um, like, placement-wise. Like, I like how big the fringe is here. Um, the pigtails are in a pretty good spot at the back. Um, obviously, you can see it's clipping through uh, quite a bit at the top there, and um, maybe the front bits do need pulling out just ever so slightly. Um so what I want to do is I want to sculpt this, but I only want to sculpt the mesh. So uh, you can hide the armature just by clicking the eye here. And then you want to go to sculpt mode. And then as you can see, I'm selected on the hair. Uh, you want to grab the grab tool here. <laughs> grab the grab tool. Uh, you want to click the grab tool. Uh, I'm going to set mine to about 150. Uh, we'll take 160-ish. Yeah, that's fine. Um, just because I'm very used to like the sculpt by now, so I know how to like navigate it. Um, but if you need it bigger, you can do it bigger. If you need it smaller, you can do it smaller. Um, so yeah, all I have to do is sculpt this out of the head or up the head, just so the head isn't clipping through anymore. Now, what you have to do is if you go up here, you can see there's like a, a mirror looking icon. If you click on X, it means that it will mirror what you do. So if you affect the one side, it'll affect the other side. Um, very helpful to keep things symmetrical. Um, so I always recommend you do use this. Um, so I'm just going to quickly sculpt this out um, as best I can. Here we go. And then lift it up. Then we're going to lift it out. There you go. 
Um, it's always best to do like very little moves when you're um, sculpting as well just because if you start doing like really big ones you'll notice that you do something wrong. Uh, it's not hard to fix something if you do so if you do do something wrong uh, it's very easy you just control Z to go back a step. Um, yeah I'm gonna add a bit more of a curve to that like that. There you go. I'm happy with the front. Um, so the back, I do know there's a little gap here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to zoom out and I'm going to drag this forward ever so slightly. As you can see, it starts clipping a bit more if you do it too much. So you just got to pull it out, make sure it's not clipping anymore. And there's a little bit there. And then this side, pull it out ever so slightly. Um, this part is all sort of subjective. You just need to make sure it's not clipping anymore. Um, so just take your time if you, you need to take your time. Um, I'm quite a perfectionist, so sometimes the sculpting of things takes a little bit of time for me. Uh, but I am going to try and get through this quite quickly just so uh, you guys... Um, don't have to wait to find out what you do next. Um, so yeah, if you just check, if I just check the back, I like that. It's pretty good. I am gonna drag this down ever so slightly just to cover the the possibility that someone might look underneath. Um, and then I'm actually gonna just pull the middle part out just to make a bit more of a round, so like the back of your head kind of there. And I'll pull this out here just slightly. There you go. I'm happy with this. Um, so yeah, that's how you like add a hair. Um, I do notice it looks like the hair is coming quite far forward. Um, so what I might quickly do is just move it back ever so slightly. Um, just so it doesn't look like it's too far forward. Um, of course, all of this is just subjective. It's just dependent on how you want to how you want it to look really. Um, I'm just gonna fix this bit and I might move. There you go. Oh yeah, so I'm happy with this. Um, so that's the hair added. Um, what I would uh, normally do is add the hair um, onto my armature and then go onto my next item uh, but what I'm actually gonna do um, for this tutorial um, just in case um, you guys decide to change your assets halfway through because you're not 100% sure they'll all match together but you want to try them um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna import all of the assets that I want to use and then I'm gonna combine them after I know that everything fits well on the model and matches everything else so Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the clothes just so I can get rid of the uwu boxes. Um, so I did pick, um, I picked a sweater from Oni Girl. Uh, let me quickly get it up. Uh, I believe it's this one. Uh, you can get it on her pay hip. It's just this nice little simple sweater, uh, free to use. Um, she even has a video on uh, doing a blender and substance time lapse, uh, which is very handy if you want to get into making scratch clothes. Um, but yeah, so this is the one I picked. Um, as you can see, when I import it, it, it it's backwards for some reason. Um, so all I'm going to do is just turn it around so it's facing the right way. So what you want to do is you want to do Control M and then Y. So all you're doing is flipping it on the axis so that it faces in the right way. Um, yeah, and same uh, same as last time, I'm going to set the origin to the geometry, um, which brings it much higher so that I can zoom in whilst I move the top to the right place on the shoulders here. So I'm going to do it about there. Very nice. Um, so yeah, as you can see... I'm uh, going to just move it back a bit. There you go. So yeah, as you can see, the arms are straight out, but on our base, the arms are down. Um, so you might be a little bit confused of how you're going to make the top fit the arms. Um, it's actually very simple when something is rigged. Uh, I noticed that my... Yeah, there we go. Uh, sometimes my blender imports things with uh, transparency on. You just want to change this to opaque if, you, if it happens to you. I think it's just my blender. 
blender because I don't really see anyone else having this issue uh, but it's not the end of the world if it um, imports uh, see-through or transparent um so yeah back to this so what you want to do is line up these bones with your arm so if we make sure that we're on the top armature so if we check the armature you want to be on is 003 so yeah you click on this it's the one above it so we want to be on 003 and then we're going to click start pose mode and then as you can see we're now in pose mode for the top uh, I'm going to click on that arm and then I'm going to go up here where the mirror is. I'm going to click on X and then I'm going to go on the green and I'm just going to rotate the arms. If you hold control, it will snap move for you, which is very useful. Um, once it's in like the right place or, you know, the right, um, yeah, the right place for your arms and stuff uh and you're happy with the placement of it what you want to do is click this button apply rest pose and it will just keep the sweater in that position for you um so yeah as you can see it fits pretty well um i do have to do a bit of sculpting just so it fits this base um so i'm going to do that now so you click on it you go into sculpt make sure you're on grab and then select your radius based on how much of it you'll have to move um, so yeah, as you can see, there's stuff here. I just need to pull it out. Same here. There we go. So yeah, sculpting and stuff is all just based on, um, how you want it to look so what's good for me you might want to do more um it's literally just personal preference so i'm gonna turn on symmetry this time because i can tell the back is clipping quite a bit like here and then also on the same part on the back here now i can't really see because the hair is kind of in my way so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna find the hair um mesh i believe it's this one and then you're just gonna hide it make it a lot easier for yourself to just sculpt and not have to worry about um not being able to see or it not being bright so i'm just gonna quickly fix that there you go and then get to fix the front there we go um and then obviously i'm gonna pull it out at the front here um i might zoom quite a bit out for this because I want quite a lot of it to be moving forward there we go um now I can't massively see um whether this is covering completely at the front so for now I'm gonna leave it like that um but obviously when you're doing it on your own model just make sure it covers everything it's supposed to um and now once I've done that I can unhide the hair so I just show it like that um and already I can tell it's gonna look quite cute with the clothes that I've picked out um so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna import the pants um, so I picked, uh, these tech pants. Here we go. Um, they fit perfectly because they're actually rigged to Panda's base. Um, so I picked, uh, these ones. Here we go. Just these ones. Nice, some simple, nice ones. Um, again, if you do download any of these, just give your creators a five star just for making something so good that we can use on all of our models for free. Um, just give them that good thumbs up get them you know some more views for them um yeah here we go so then we do the same process we click on it um there's no material here so you just want to click add new material and then scroll down to texture and then you just want to add your texture so here we go this is the texture that comes with it I'm just going to click double sided and i'm also going to take off that um I'm going to take off that reflect so I get rid of the shine. Um, so yeah, um, they're already sculpted um, for a panda's base. So you won't actually have to do any sculpting for the pants, um, which is, you know, very helpful. So sometimes you can, depending on what base you decide to purchase or use, um, people will rig clothing to that base. And if you 
buy anything for that base or find anything free for that base it should just fit that base perfectly um, unless they state in their description that you might need to do a bit of sculpting um yeah so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the uwu from far away just to make sure everything is covered um yes it is um I just did that um uh just to make sure um but it, it it is and it's all good so I don't actually need these uwu boxes anymore so I'm gonna just delete them um very nice very nice very nice um so yeah the model's looking pretty good so far um I'm just gonna hide some of these armatures uh just so I can focus on the way it looks right now um there we go um, so there is, uh, obviously shoes that I wanted to add, so I picked, um, some shoes, let me find them, uh, just these here, um, so yeah, I picked these, again, this is just my blender important things, um, transparent, if you do have this issue, just go into your materials, go down to settings, um, and you'll see here that it's showing back face, you want to turn that off, and then you can just change it back to a pack as well. There we go. As you can see, this is just a mesh. There's no rigging involved, and it's only one shoe. And you might be thinking, how how do I how do I fit these to my model, and how do I get two shoes, and how do I do this? Um, honestly, very easy. I can. We're gonna go through this now. So, um, click on your shoe. You wanna just size it. So I'm gonna size it quite small, uh, just cause pandas feet's kind of small. Um. It's facing the wrong way, so we have to use the same method that we did with the top. Uh, you do control M and then on the Y and it turns around for you. I'm gonna go to move um, and I'm gonna try and position it in the right place. Here we go. That is a pretty good size. Now I did edit the texture um, off screen, uh, but I just changed the blue and the red to white. So I'm just gonna have a very nice, simple black and white um, shoe. There we go. Um, but first, uh, obviously we need to make sure our entire mesh is uh, not kind of clip in with the foot so what I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do an edit mode this time uh, to show you another method just in case you really don't like sculpting um, so yeah I'm gonna go in edit mode and then up here you'll see this little circle is called proportional editing you want to click that and then you want to you want to click on uh, connected only if you only want to move one part of the mesh so for example if I did this it would only move this part of the mesh that I've selected. Um, so because the shoe isn't um, all just one mesh, I'm going to keep um, going to keep this unticked. Um, and then what you're going to do, you're just going to click on points uh, and then you're going to move the shoe. Now, bear in mind, if you just move the shoe uh, as it is, it's all going to move. Um, so what you want to do is as you move it, you can scroll your mouse wheel and you see that this circle appears. Now this affects how much of the mesh it moves. So only this part of the mesh is moving and if I move in only this point and then so on so on. Um, so yeah, um, you just gotta play around with this a little bit. Um, it gets a bit easier to like understand how much of the mesh you wanna move, what direction you need to move it. Um, just play around with it I guess. Um, you will get used to the controls uh, after a little while. Uh, I'm gonna do this point and there we go. And yeah again you're just just gonna keep doing this to make it fit. Um, here we go and then it's a little bit there and then this point here 
might take these two. Uh, this point and this point, maybe. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna find out which, what this is connected to that's causing it to do this. Um, so I think it is this point. Nope. Uh, it is... Maybe this. Yes. Um, so yeah, for this point, what I want to do is I want to move this and zoom right in just so it doesn't look like it's clipping anymore there. And then as you can see, that looks a lot better now um, like this. And then obviously this side is clip, clip. Sorry. <laughs> this side is clipping a lot. Um, so you want to just pull it out. Here we go. Just pull it right out of there, and then here we go. Very nice. There we go. Um, so yeah, like I said, editing and moving stuff so it's not clipping is literally just um, just personal preference on uh, how you do it, and then um, also how much time you take doing it. Um, the longer you take doing it, um, the more used to it you will get as well, um, and the faster you'll get when you practice as well. So yeah, um, there we go. I am very happy with that. Yeah. All right, so my trick on how to um, get two shoes from the one shoe and also just rig it in general is I always start with one, shape it how it how you want it to be. And depending on what foot it is, I actually rig it straight away. Um, so what you want to do is go to, it's like this triangle here, this green triangle, um, but it's called object data properties. You want to go to vertex groups and add one. Uh, now, because this is on the right foot, um, a lot of you might be like, uh, that actually that's the left. Um, the way you work it out is you face, the way the model is facing, so this is the back of the model, the way the model is facing is how your left and rights are. So this would be the left and this would be the right. So then when you're looking at the model, it's backwards. So this is the right and this is the left. Um, that's kind of the only way I can explain how that happens. Just the way the model is looking at you is like how it is. Um, when you're looking at the model, it's reverse. Um, so this is actually the, the right, even though it's our left. Um, so what you want to do is then just type in right ankle. Um, oh, um, this is very important that you get the name right. So in your body... Um, all your bones have names to do with the um, base. Very often they're all very similar. So you'll have like left ankle, right ankle, right toe, blah, blah, blah. The way it's spelt here is the same way it has to be spelt here. Otherwise, this vertex group won't wait to this bone. I hope that makes sense. Um, just try and make sure the name of your vertex group is the name of the bone you want it to move with, basically. Um, very important, otherwise your mesh won't move with that bone. Um, so I've named mine right ankle, and as you can see, it's the same spelling. Uh, it's got one capital letter, it's got a space. It's exactly the same as this bone. Um, so now what we want to do is weight paint this to the ankle. I do the ankle because um, most uh, shoes can just be rigged to the ankle and it'd be completely fine in full body, etc. So I'm just going to do to the ankle. So you want to click on weight paint here. And then up here, I'm going to go to add instead of draw. And then what you want to do is you just want to paint your entire shoe. Um, so the best way to do is if you go into so, uh, solid mode instead and you go into x-ray, you'll actually be able to see the whole of your shoe. Uh, you can turn your radius up and paint the whole shoe. Um, 
and yeah, you just paint it till everything is red in your, um, on your shoe basically, uh, just so that the whole shoe moves with the ankle bone. Um, there you go. As you can see, everything is painted. Um, so I'm going to go back into um, viewport shading and I'm going to go into object mode. Um, so now this is way painted to the right ankle, but obviously we want two shoes and we want them to be way painted to the right foot. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to duplicate this. Um, so first of all, what you want to do is control A and then clear your transforms by doing this. Okay, so you just click all transforms and then you'll see that the pivot point is now in the middle. Um, and this actually helps with mirroring. So if you hold, click shift D and then enter, and then you do control M X, as you can see, we just got ourselves a second shoe. Ta-da. Um, so what happens sometimes when you duplicate, um, your normals on the second one that you duplicated become inside out. Um, what you just want to do is just check it. So if you see this, um, icon here, um, it shows your overlays. What you want to do is open this and then go to face orientation. Now, as you can see, both of my shoes are actually inside out. So what you want to do is shift to go into edit mode, click A, control Oh no, Alt N, and then you want to recalculate outside. Um, now on this one, some of the mesh didn't actually go blue, which is what we wanted. So what we're going to do is click a point and control L, and then we're just going to flip them so that they all face the right way. There we go. There we go. So now we have one shoe that is facing the right way. So we just go into the edit mode on the other side. A, Alt N, outside. Then you just want to click on the red parts, Control L, and then just flip them so that they're all facing the right way. Um, this is just to help with issues of transparency, um, mostly. Um, uh, because if you leave the normal space in the wrong way, um, sometimes the transparency of the mesh can, um, if you don't turn color enough, there will be transparency where the red parts are. So like this part here would be transparent, um, which isn't an issue because it's not on the, you know, the side that we can see. So everyone on the outside should always be blue. Um, no, yeah, so that's done. Um... So I'm going to go out of the face orientation and there you go. As you can see, I got a pair of shoes here. Um, so with this one that we copied over, it's still weight painted to the right ankle, which is obviously not what we want. So instead of re-weight painting the shoe, all you have to do is change the name of your vertex group. So we've got the right and this is the left. So you just change it to the left and then this should weight paint to the left this is weight painted to the right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to combine these two shoes. Um, so if you click on one and then you hold shift and click on the other one, they're both highlighted. Then you want to click control J and now they're just one mesh. So if you move one, you move both. Um, again, you just want to make sure that when you merged it, see how one goes inside out. Uh, I'm not 100% sure why Blender uh, does this. Uh, but you can select everything on one of your meshes and then just recalculate outside again um, just to fix them. Here you go. It only takes two seconds when you just control L, flip them. There you go. Uh, yeah, there you go. And now they're fine again. So then I'm going to turn it back off. Um, and there we go. We have a pretty good fully clothed model already. Um, the only thing left to do is just combine everything. Um, but, you know, um, I'm going to do that first and then I might add some accessories 
um, on how to do it. So what we want to do is I'm going to close this very long list of bones I have here just so I can see my armatures more. Um, a little tip as well, if you actually um, are making a for sale model, what a good idea is if you write what your asset is and then you also write the um, creator's uh, name as well or if they say oh make sure to credit me um at this so here you go at this um discord what you want to do is uh just copy their discord user and just pop it in there just so you can remember what um creator made what and who you have to credit it's actually very helpful um so i'm just gonna do that so i know um but here you go, very good. So all we have to do is parent the shoes to the armature of the body. Um, so to do that, let's just turn on the body. So this is the base armature. So if you move the base, it's just the base um, and the head that moves. Um, so you want the shoes to be connected to that because they don't have any um, bones in them. So it's gonna be easy to weight paint these to the armature. So if you click on the shoes and then you control click on the armature, you gotta move your mouse into the window here and you're gonna click control P. And then as you can see, it comes up with set parent to. If you then click object keep transform, you'll see that the shoes move up here with the rest of the um, connected meshes so the head and the body the body and the head here um, and then the shoes so you'll see that that happens and you're like okay um, sometimes you have to fix model before it will work um, but I'm gonna test it before I, I do that so let me just oh I forgot to change it back to the body so this is the body one here we go I'm gonna move the body yeah so um, Sometimes when you manually uh, parent it like that, Blender doesn't quite pick up that it's actually parented to the armature bones just yet. All you have to do is um, untick all of the little boxes in um, cats on your fixed model. Just untick everything. And then you just want to click fix model. Uh, just give it a second. And then you'll see that um, once you've done that, it's connected now so as you can see the shoes are now moving with the um body um don't know why you have to some you have to like sort of refresh blender for it to work i'm not sure why um but it's it works anyway and i always do that just make sure all your boxes are ticked off um because sometimes it'll do unnecessary things like uh fix twist bones or join your meshes or any of these other things so just untick them all if you don't want it to do anything which I usually don't um so now what we're going to do is we're going to combine the clothing to the armature of the body um so let's start with the pants so the pants are already actually rigged to panda's base so these ones are really easy to uh just add onto uh our existing armature um so what we want to do is go to cats again our custom model creation, merge armatures, make sure all the boxes are off. And then what you want to do is make sure your existing base armature is the first one. So it is for me, this one here. And then you want to make sure the second one is your pants armature. So if I open up my pants, I can see that my armature is 004 because it's the one that's above the pants mesh. So I'm just going to change this to 004 and then I'm going to click merge armatures. And then you just give Blender a second to do that. And then as you can see, there you go. It is combined and your pants are now added to your armature. So I'm not sure if I have to, oh no, I don't. Okay, here you go. There you go. As you can see, it is now connected and uh, it moves with the body. Um, for those ones, you don't have to uh, refresh your model with fixed model for some reason. Um, they work straight away. Um, but if you manually weight paint something and then add it to the, the armature, 
by pairing it, you may have to use fixed model. So just be aware of that. If it doesn't move straight away, sometimes you just need to um, turn everything off and then click fixed model just to refresh your blender. Um, so now we have the pants connected. It's just the top really that we want to connect um, and then the hair. So I might do the hair as well really quick because the hair is actually um, a similar way to the pants. So what you want to do is make sure your base armature is the first one and then we're going to make sure our hair armature is the second one. Um, so we're looking for, uh, so this is hair mesh, we're looking for 002. So then we just go into our list and click 002 and then we merge the armatures again. And then just give your blender a second. Uh, yours may do it a lot quicker than mine. Um, there we go. And then as you can see, now your armature has the hair bones with it. So you can just test this by moving the neck bone. Uh, just make sure the hair moves with it, which it does. Um, I'm gonna stop pose mode. Um, so now the only thing not connected is our sweater. Um, but if you look at your sweater armature, um, let me just click on it. It's, it's kind of different to the one that we had for Panda's base. Um, as you can see, there's a lot more bones. The placements are a little bit off. Um, so what I'm actually going to do, um, because the top is actually skin tight, it's quite a tight mesh. It, it you know, fits really well, tightly to the body. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unparent the top to the existing armature and then I'm going to use data transfer to rig it to panda's base okay so sounds confusing but we'll just go for it step by step so first of all you want to unparent the top from its armature so you just click on your top mesh and then control click your armature put your mouse in the window and then do alt p and then you'll see it comes up with clear parent so then you want to click on clear and keep transformation then what you'll see is the sweater is no longer under the armature uh, drop down menu. Uh, that means you have an armature here that isn't connected to anything and doesn't really need to be here. So what you're going to do is you're going to just delete that. Okay, so now we don't have those bones in our way. Uh, but unfortunately, that means that we do have a sweater that is rigged to somebody else's base. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what I would do. Um, some people will probably keep the existing weight paint that's already on it. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of these and I'm just going to give it a fresh set of vertex groups based on pandas base. So first things first, I'm going to go down to the object data just here, and then I'm going to click on vertex groups and I'm just going to delete all groups. Uh, now this, um, top actually has a basis shape key, which I don't think is anything, um, yeah, it doesn't do anything. So I'm just going to delete that because I don't really need a base shape, um, for it. So just delete that. Um, and yeah, now we have no, um, vertex groups. It's not weight painted at all, um, to any base rig or anything. So what we want to do is actually rig this. So what I'm going to do is if you go to modifiers, here you'll see that there's already an amateur one just delete that we don't need that anymore we're gonna add a new modifier called data transfer once you click it you come up with this little menu here all you want to do is in source you want to take the eyedrop tool and click on the body so it should fill in body um, for your base and then you're gonna go down to where it says vertex data you want to tick it open the drop down menu, click vertex groups, and then you're going to click generate data layout. Now it's not going to look like it does anything and you're going to think it's not done anything, but if you click it once, it will do something. And then you go up here to, um, apply, you click apply. And then when you go back to this menu, you can see that there is now a list of vertex groups. So, um, it's now got weight painting already on it based on your base weight paint, um, which means that it should just mimic the body, um, weight paint, uh, which is super handy for a skin tight clothing because it'll stop stuff like clipping, etc, etc. Um, that's if you were to keep the body underneath, which in this case I won't be because this model will eventually be free for everyone once I've got through all the tutorials. Um... 
yeah, so then what you want to do is same with the shoes. We want to weight paint, um, we want to parent it, sorry, to the um, body armature. So you want to control, click on your um, top, control, click on your armature, put your mouse in the window and do control P. And then you want to set your parent to object, keep transform. And then as you can see, it just joined the rest of the meshes over in my um, armature here. So now everything on this model is connected so far. Um, just because I know that we manually weight painted this and it won't move with the body just yet, I'm going to fix model. So make sure all these are off and then click fix model. Here we go. And it will say fix model successful at the bottom. Um, and now if we do start pose mode, um, the top should move with the arm like so. There we go. Very nice. Um, yeah, so that means that everything on our model so far is connected. And um, that's how you put together like your model with hair and clothing. Um, it's similar processes with accessories and other clothing um so i have got one more thing that i was thinking i could add to this model um i'm gonna be adding a hat um this is by hayway here we go um she recently updated her hat from her pack um so i'm gonna be adding just this one here uh same method i'm gonna set origin to geometry and then i'm gonna just lift it slightly uh, to where I would like it to be, um, about, about there, I think, um, it's going to need a slight bit of sculpting to make it fit, um, nicely, so all I'm going to do is just hide the, um, armature for now, and I'm going to go into sculpt mode, um, and I'm just going to drag it out again using mirror, just going to drag it out again, uh, to make sure it's not clipping anymore. Um, here we go. Okay. Um, but yeah, like I said, this method and uh, of applying assets to a model will work on assets that you bought, assets that you found for free. Um, yeah, it will just work. Um, just Pay attention to like what bases uh, the creator has um, rigged them to already, um, whether they will um, work well on the base that you have. Um, mostly anything can be re-rigged for the base that you do use though, so don't let it put you off if they rig to a different base. You can use the data transfer method and then manually fix it up um, the same way that we manually weight painted the shoes um shoes are a little bit easier um but um but yeah just uh pay attention to that and um if you play around with the sculpts and everything you'll get used to a lot of them a lot of the processes a lot you know a lot more if you use them um so i love this um but i don't like the way that these are coming through the hat the parts of the hair so I'm actually going to go on the mesh and I'm actually going to delete these points um just that one there and this one and then I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same on the other side here because there's two just poking out there just gonna delete them delete them and then I might delete this little bit at the top as well just delete that. Um, now, just to make sure it doesn't look weird um, underneath the hat, I'm just going to do that. Um, as you can see, there's a tiny bit of clipping now because I did delete, um, I did delete parts of it. So I'm just, I'm just going to use proportional editing here to um, just cover up like sort of what I have exposed now by deleting those. Um, but I don't think it's causing any massive, massive issues by deleting those parts. Um, there we go. And then just check the other side too. Yeah, I don't see any issues with deleting those parts. Um, so yeah, uh, there we go. Um, yeah, I love it already. It's so cute. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to add the hat the same way that I added um, everything else. So you want to go to cats, 
custom model creation. Make sure all of these are unticked. Armature is the first one because it is my body armature. And then the second one is my hat armature because it's the only other one not there. So I'm just going to quickly merge those armatures. <laughs> um, also, a thing I haven't been doing, which you guys really should do, um, if you haven't already, you should save your project um, regularly. Um, as you do this, just in case your blender crashes or, you know, breaks halfway through. Um, it's a lot of progress to kind of lose. Um, I'm kind of used to not saving um, my projects and it does hit me back sometimes and I lose quite a lot of progress. Um, so definitely make sure you save, just file, save as, uh, and then just give it a name. Um, so I'm just going to save it in here as my tutorial model. So I'll just click it here, save as, um, and then you have your model saved there. Um, again, um, I'm just going to double check everything works on her. So pose mode, you can go crazy. I'm going to test the head for the hat. So yeah, the hat works very nicely. Um, I'm going to check the arms. Um, so I'm going to just turn mirror on because it will check both at the same time. I'm just going to lift them up and then I'll check her legs too. I'm uh, just going to, there you go. As you can see, she's fully working. Um, I'll check the hair too. Yep. As you can see, she works fully. Um, another way to test everything at once it on the hip bone, if you spin her around and everything turns and nothing pulls, nothing breaks, then she's successfully connected. So it's a bit of a crazy way to check her, but that's how I check my models when I'm making any in Blender. Um, and really that concludes um, how to put together your model using assets in Blender. Um, so I do hope this does help some people. Um, as I said, this is going to be a free model. So what I will have to do is cut the body that's underneath the clothing, uh, which I won't do on stream just because um, it kind of wastes time. Uh, basically, all I'll be doing is going on my body mesh edit mode. Um, and then I will just be deleting like... The mesh underneath so like if I take all of that and I delete that uh, that's effectively what I'll be doing um, when I get down to it so um, just in case anyone needed to know how to do that um, but that's gonna c conclude this tutorial I hope it did help some people on how to put a model together um, this model is actually ready for unity um, so yeah I do hope this helped some people and um, just stay tuned because I will have a part two uh, tutorial, I guess, out when I go through Unity with this model. And then I will release the package after I finish both tutorials. And yeah, um, remember if you download any of the um, free assets that I link, make sure you just give the creators a bit of praise, give them five star for creating such good content for free. Um, always ask for permission for paid assets to be used on free models, which is what I did with Panda's Base. Um, just respect people's TOU and you will fit just perfectly in the community. And yeah, I hope this helped. Um, so that's me out for now. Um, goodbye, I guess.